Hi everyone, my name is Steven, the uh, founder of the Terraxa project, and uh, today we're going to talk about why single chain topologies have a fundamental trade-off between throughput and security. Okay, so first of all, what is a single chain topology in blockchain, right? Well, everyone knows about Bitcoin and Ethereum, and they're basically just one block after another, one follows another, that's a single chain topology. Um, a single chain topology at any given time, there only can only be one chain, at any given time frame, time period, there can only be one block, right? So that's what makes the single chain topology unique. Now, what is really driving, you know, the slow throughput of single chain topologies, right? Well, it all really has to do with this idea that the network really wants to avoid forking, right? Forking is something that is very, very bad for the network's efficiency and security. But what is forking? Well, forking is something like this, right? Instead of just having one chain, you have several chains, right? So instead of having one block to build on top of, you can have the option of building on top of several different candidates, right? And forking is bad, like I said before, because there can only really be one chain. So these other things have to be eliminated, right? The longest chain typically wins. This is what happens on Ethereum and Bitcoin. So having these other wasted chains creates waste on the network, it clogs it up, wasted work by the miners, and uh, and it also creates opportunities for attackers to actually attack the network. So that's all very bad. You want to minimize that. So one way to minimize it uh, is really for the entire network to just wait, right? Let's just wait for a really long time until everyone really has access to the same information, the same perspective about where the network is right now, right? Typically what happens is that if it takes one block to propagate, you know, go through a network uh, so that all the miners has time to see it, and then, you, and then you reserve enough time, be very conservative, and say just wait significantly longer than that. So we absolutely make sure that everyone has seen the same information, right? So, all right. So let's look at this from the miner's perspective, right? Let's say we have two miners, right? Of course, on a typical network, you have way more than two miners, right? So let's look at this from the miner's perspective. If everything is going well, if everything is going great, and there's absolutely no forking at any given moment, you know, when the two miners are saying, well, what should we build next? Like, wh which block should we build the next block on top of? Well, they both see block one, right? And they both say, hey, block one is the right block to build on. And that's great because there's no disagreement. There's implicit consensus going on and uh, everything's going really well, right? Okay, awesome. So how do we increase throughput, right? Let's say we want to really drastically increase the throughput on a single chain topology. And one idea, let's just maybe make the blocks really big, right? So instead of a block holding, you know, 100 transactions, let's make it hold, you know, 100,000 transactions, for example. So, so we have much, much bigger blocks. Well, what happens with very, very big blocks is that, you know, because they're so much bigger, it, they take a lot longer to actually go through a network, right? So at any given moment, instead of both miners or all the miners reaching the same block, this miner might see block one, this miner might see block two, right? They're much, much bigger blocks, but they're not all going to reach different miners at the same time because the distance is different, right? So now we have an implicit disagreement, right? Miner one might say, oh, I'm going to build on block one, whereas miner two say we're going to build on block two. And then now you have introduced forking into the network and forking is bad. So we don't want that. Okay, so bigger blocks, not a great idea. Right. Okay. So what if instead of bigger blocks, let's just use more blocks, right? Let's say instead of producing one block every 10 minutes, you know, on say the Bitcoin network, let's just have a hundred blocks for every 10 minutes, right? Then, then we, then we really increase throughput. Well, no, because out of those 100, you still can only pick one. You can only really just pick one. So what we ended up doing is that minor one might see something like, you know, B2, B46, you know, B78 and minor two might see something like, you know, B100, B89, you know, B65, blah, blah, blah. So now we're really in trouble here, right? Because then they only, they, minor one has to pick a specific block, one block only, minor two has to pick one block only. And there's really no way to guarantee or even probability, it's not even probable that they're going to pick the same block to build on top of. So you definitely have forking, right? So that doesn't really work either, right? So what you actually end up seeing is that all sort of the very naive, um, simple ways to really increase throughput on um, a single chain topology um, necessarily sacrifices security by introducing more forking. 
right? So for example, this is TPS throughput. This is security. You start off here being super, super secure by having extremely low throughput. If you just use these naive methods on a single chain uh, topology, what you actually end up happening is something that looks like this, right? Where you're really rapidly sacrificing security as you start ramping up in the other throughput. What we really want is something that looks like this, right? Where there's not a whole lot of trade-off in security, but TPS keeps going up. And this is possible without sharding uh, with something we call a block DAG topology, right? And this is exactly what Terasa uses for its fundamental um, blockchain topology. And we'll talk about that next time on why block DAG is actually able to break that trade-off. Thank you.